Hey guys, it's Trice here, and we're getting the most horsepower out of this naturally aspirated inline 4 engine. This is the second engine of this new season in the Ellisbury update, as I'm still editing the 4.2 campaign video of building two cars I made for the car company, Weno. So look out for that video coming soon if you are or aren't subscribed to the channel. If so, then click on subscribe, ring the bell, and do all that good stuff. So anyways, for the engine build, so first things first, on the top left portion of your screen is you set the year to the default year of 2012 to 2020 to max it out. And after you selected the inline 4 engine configuration, you're going to be choosing the aluminum silicon heavy block material because of it being the best in power density and the best in power and all good stuff. For the bore for the family capacity, you upboard this, max it out to 120 millimeters, and for the stroke is you set this to an 87.9 millimeters, which gets the family capacity engine size to 3,977 cubic centimeters, or roughly 4 liters. And we're using a dual overhead cam 5 valve made out of aluminum silicon. And of course, with this engine and everything else in general for the quality sliders, max this out to a plus 15 for everything you see the quality slider. And the bottom right with the sandbox tech pool, this little box in the bottom right, click on this to bring up the sandbox tech pool for the engine and car and everything. So for the engine, you max out the engine tech for the engine in general to plus 15, the bottom end to a 15, the top end, aspiration, you can skip this, the fuel system maxes out, and the exhaust max this to a plus 15. After you max out to a plus 15 for everything that you see here, click on apply changes and we'll head on to the bottom end of the engine. So with the bottom end of the engine, well first things first with the variant capacity, unlike before with the inline 3 engine, which I'll show you the revised inline 3 engine a little bit, is that you bust upboard this to 124 millimeters, which gets the engine size, the true engine size, to 4,246 cubic centimeters, or rounding this down will be 4.2 liters, or if you want to round it up, 4.3. And the crank counter and pistons with the inside of the engine will be made out of billet steel for the crankshaft, titanium for the con rods, forged heavy for the pistons, and require a balancing shaft for the balancing bass and increase the counterweight slider to 210 or 220 by maxing this out as much as possible and same thing up the quality. For the compression, you max this bad boy out to an extreme level, maximize it to 16.0 to 1 ratio with the cam profile, same thing, maxes to 100 at a racing setting. The springs and lifters increase this by 10 from a 50 to a 60. And we're going to be implementing VVT for all cams and increase the RPM to 8600 RPM. And skip the turbocharger and going on to the fuel system of this engine, it'll be a direct injection throttle per cylinder race intake with a manifold size set to a pretty high 82. And we're going to be using nitrobethane, aka the dragster fuel up in here, with the ignition timing margin right below this, set it to a negative 5, which advances it as much as possible. With the fuel mapping, lowered this quite a bit to a lean setting at a 30, and lastly, for the exhaust headers of this here engine. And with this map in general, they downloaded a Salt Flats level designer, which you can check that in the Automation Steam Workshop to get this here level designer rather than the usual ones in the game. So anyways, headers, two-bit racing headers with the header size at a 78, with the exhaust diameter set to a 69.8 millimeters or 2.75 inches, and also, nice number. And there's going to be no cats, and no mufflers, and finally, you bring up the quality, which will bring it up to 1,943.9 horsepower at 8600 RPM, and a torque of 1,187.1 pounds of the torque at 8600 RPM. So the torque and horsepower pretty much peaks out at 8600 RPM. The red line is because with the con rods, they're pretty much maxed out in terms of RPM stress, as we got 94% of stress being applied to the con rods. Anything higher with the con rods or the RPM limit, then the engine will break, rendering this engine broken. And its horsepower rating and record invalid. So unlike with version 4.2 where I do the fake gear shifts in the dyno screen here, the best I can do in version 4.3 is do a basic pull test and start the engine up manually and give you detailed analytics of the engine like the tailpipe emissions and everything else in general. So first things first, do a pull test and manually start the engine.
despite the abrupt stop. <laughs> so the fake gear shifts at the end, yeah, it's pretty much not possible to try to replicate the version 4.2 gear shifts with this new dyno screen, so pretty much in the future, it's just pull test, start, throttle, RPM target, and that's it. And I almost forgot about the inline 3 engine that I've revised, so I changed out the engine block to an aluminum silicon heavy while keeping the family's capacity bore and stroke the same. In the bottom end section, I've upboard the engine to 124mm than the previous set at 123mm. The compression, cam profile, springs and lifters, and the RPM limit are the same. For the fuel system, I dropped the fuel mapping from 28 down to a 24 which it's set to. Finally, I slightly increased the header and exhaust size which has a new power rating of 1,403.2 horsepower 9100 RPM and a torque rating of 813.9 pounds feet of torque at 7000 RPM. This is an increase of around 4 horsepower of this version compared to the other one in the inline 3 build video. So with this 4 banger making nearly 2000 horsepower, it's a powerful engine for its size. Coming in at around 4.3-ish liters, this is probably the ultimate drag car or hypercar engine. Just make sure your tires are wide enough to handle the enormous amount of wheel spin in every single gear for your next car build. So anyways, that'll do it with Automation, the Car Cubby Tycoon Games version 4.3, aka the Ellisbury Update. And for those who are interested in this type of content, please be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any videos like this in the future. So this is Tries Rising Up, and signing out.